ओके हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हियर आई एम वर्किंग ऑन प्रॉब्लम नंबर होमवर्क प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम फॉर लेसन नंबर फोर पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट ओके सो लेट्स डू सम प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम फॉर लेसन फोर पॉइंट वन एंड फोर पॉइंट टू ऑन एक्सपोनेंशियल फंक्शंस एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग द ट्रांसपोजिशन ऑफ एक्सपोनेंशियल फंक्शन हॉरिजेंटल सिमटोट वर्टिकल सिमटोट एंड सो ऑन like in this example one example is question problem number 1 you it so will be given lot of graphs of uh, exponential function maybe 2 raised to x or could be 3 raised to x or could be e raised to x remember e raised to x e is a special number 2.7182 and so on so that's the natural number we call them but let's let's stick to only 2 raised to x graph so which one do you think is the graph and you can see the original graph here let's see the original graph of y is 2 raised to x is is this is the so this is the original graph of and you can see this the red graph is the reflection of the of the blue graph so this is f of x so the so this is the original graph let's say f of x is 2 raised to x so all, all it's happening is it's reflection that means the new graph that is gx is 2 raised to minus x that's it or we can also write it as half raised to x is the same thing because there is a minus 1 so i hope that is taken care what about the second one so the second graph is if this is the original graph let's say this is the original graph so the, the this is the reflection over the uh, over the y axis so if this is 2 raised to x this become minus 2 raised to x that's it let's see the other two okay problem number 3 clearly shows that that's the y equals 2 raised to k there's nothing to talk about so how did we get this one so it means there is a graph this is the graph let's say f of x is 2 raised to x and what's happening here is first of all you you reflect this graph over the y equals so so this will be first you reflect over the y so that means this one you change to maybe another one let's say f of 1 and you write it 2 raised to minus and after that you get last one and then you reflect again over the x axis so there are two reflection one is first is reflection over the y axis and then reflection over the x axis you get the answer this is the answer or you could also you could also first so if this is the original function you could first reflect this way over the x axis that means if this is 2 raised to x you do minus 2 raised to x and then you reflect this over the y axis something like this so that become minus 2 raised to minus and you are done okay question number 2 is how do you get this so to obtain this graph we start with the graph of gx so the gx that f of x is 6 raised to x that means 6 raised to x May is e six is quite a very big number than two. Remember, if it is two, if this is two raised to x, the six raised to x will be something like this. So it will also go through the. So this is how it will look like. But then, what does this basically means? It is six raised to x, and if I compare this plus k, that's the k which is is shift uh, up or down. and this h which is right here decides horizontal shift and k so in this case you have the x is by itself so it is 6x so there is no left right no left right movement there is only minus 1 that means k is k is minus 1 that means this graph so this graph this is the graph which is 6 raised to x this is 6 raised to x this shift one unit that means this is a dot this will go right here so the so the new one will be something like this huh? and you will see that the minus one that you see this k uh, uh, the horizontal asymptote will be 
at this is the horizontal asymptote where the graph will never touch this this is y equals k which is here y is 1 so the domain is all real everything and the range is above so the new one this one if you want to write the domain it will be minus 1 and then all the way it goes up like this which is plus infinity the second question is uh, is similar one but it but this time they give you hx is this right so it means it is 6x minus 1 and plus 0 that means the function there is no up down no up down but the, the graph shift one unit to the right so that means if this is a graph if this is the original graph and it will move this will move one place like this it will move one place to the right and the horizontal asymptote stays the same that's all that you're supposed to write in the well, let's go to the another one okay use the graph of f so you're given this f of x and remember f of x is the 0.6x and remember when you have the 0.6 is a number that is less than one that means the base when you try to write the definition of exponential function is b raised to x where b has to be greater than one i mean it has to be greater than zero and b should not be one and whenever this is it's this way the graph is decreasing so you have to know that the graph for a fraction the graph is something like this now in this case they give you this graph 0 0.68 which is, which is almost like a three-fifth uh, raised to x kind of a thing uh, so what is this for what's happening here is there is a first there is a minus x so this means the graph is this graph whatever the red graph which is y equals 0.6x you have to reflect it over the over the x axis because there's a minus sign so this graph first reflects over the x -axis, and you shift three units to the right so that means if this eight units so if this is if this is one let's say whatever the point it goes one two three four five six seven eight so it means this point goes right here I mean the graph will be something like this so all you're seeing the graph can be reflected over the x-axis here and then shifting the graph so eight units above the graph so and you can see this one the original one is the uh, y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote so this gets shifted one two three four five six seven and eight so that's the that will be the y equals eight is the horizontal asymptote for the new graph for this function sorry this function uh so the this question can you say here we need to figure out using the calculator so first of all let's let's get this put this three raised to x minus one in the calculator so if i go to this one and click on this and start with the new and discard the old one and we want the calculator first i want to write the function the function is click on this suppose suppose i want to type in f of whatever that is e and then instead of equal control this thing with the colon and then it was three raised to x minus one right so it is three raised to the power x minus one and then you just enter and it is fed in the com in the calculator and you want to know what is f of let's say half and you want to write in two place decimal then all you'll have to do is click on control and enter and you get in the decimal and it doesn't matter what question if it is uh 2.5 or minus one let's put if i put f of minus two and you can see that you uh, so i made a mistake here so go back and enter but this time you write control and you get the answer and round it to the nearest two place decimal let's move to the next question is okay same thing here you plug this e raised to x and put these things and you get the answer to the three places what about here what's the difference between uh three raised to x and three raised to minus x what's the difference between this uh, graph of both so how does this look like okay and clearly see so you don't have to exactly all you know, need to know is the main one i always like to say is uh, two raised to x so let me use the black color for this this is two raised to x 
Now, this is 3 raised to x. Now, remember 2 is less than 3 and then if I put 2 raised to x, this is always equal provided, of course, it has to be x has to be greater than 1. Only then it is true. In other words, the graph of this 3 raised to x will be a little steeper. That means it will be something like this. So, this will be the graph. And remember, so at this point, so the pink color, sorry, this is 0. So, x greater than, this is good for x greater than 0. That means this one is for output of 3 raised to x is bigger than output of this. And you can see the pink color. But if you take anything to the left, so to the left of 0, that then it is become smaller like this. See? So, so this is 3 raised to x. But what's the meaning of g is given to you? Is it g x is 3 raised to minus x? You can see this minus x means you need to graph uh, minus x. So it has to be a reflection of the pink color. So the pink color is whatever the point here will be here. If this is here, then this will, so this will be the reflection of of the of the so g x is nothing but the reflection of the graph of the original function f of x that's all it is so this is the graph and both of them have the same horizontal asymptote if you can see the horizontal asymptote is is the x axis which is y equals to zero all it means is is at, at an axis let's see so in the and the black color if you see the black color this is the black color on as you make x very large negative numbers you see this part so when when x is very large negative number that means 3 raised to minus uh let's put it like uh minus 10 i just put that become 1 over 3 10 see so it's like 1 3 and it becomes a very very small number so that's what it means and both the side even the this one also this side when x is a very large positive number then 3 raised to minus x also will become almost zero that's what that means this will become zero so as and when the problems are going on i'm going to explain to you the conceptual understanding of each of this is that the domain is also the same and the range is about this graph is the range part is zero and all the way up plus infinity so graph the function this one so how do we graph this first of all you see we need to know what's the graph of this so 3 raised to x is a little steeper than 2 raised to x so if i so we can do this, let's say this is the graph let's see of 3 raised to x but what what's the now remember horizontal asymptote e is y equals zero here and the graph you can clearly see and this is that zero is one this is an important number because three raised to zero is one that means if if the input is zero the output is zero and there's one more thing is if this is, is one here uh, so there's one more thing you should know also for the main function three raised to x is when x equals one it is 3 raised to 1 is 3. So 1 is 3. Even this graph is not that nice, but that's what it is. But what does this minus 2 means? That means this graph, the blue graph, uh, shifts 2 units down. That means if this is the point, this point will move 1 and 2. That's minus 1. That means the this horizontal asymptote will move two units down so this will be the new new horizontal asymptote and the graph has to go through this so this graph will be this graph will be something like this so the question is asked what is the domain so the domain will be the minus infinity to plus infinity the range will be starting from minus two here so this will be and by just this is that k which is when i always write y equals b raised to minus h plus k this k is always the y is k is the horizontal asymptote and visuals are very clear this is the one so so it goes down to minus two and then everything up that means the range part is the range is minus two and plus infinity it goes up all the way and you're done so 
this graph is also an increasing function and also uh, continuous so there's no break here so main thing is a continuous function increasing goes through this has a horizontal asymptote y equals minus 2 as a word there is no vertical asymptote there's only horizontal asymptote so i hope this uh, so in the so the bottom line is the original function the blue the, the blue one the blue one this blue color switches switches where is the blue color okay this blue switches two units down that's all it is and i hope i make sense okay question number eight so this, this time they give y equals this part mm. now what i'll do is i want to write it like okay our main equation is y equals uh, something some constant times the b raised to x so this is a in general this is how the uh, exponential function has to be okay uh, because all the time we have the regular main parent function is y is b raised to x where b cannot be zero and b has to be greater than zero this is exponential function so when that b a when i talk about this a so this is like a a vertical stretch and or vertical shrink uh, depends on a positive negative so a positive will be something like this so it stretches like this so for a greater than one there will be vertical stretch and a between let's see like this it, it will be shrinking like this so the same one but it will shrink uh, the thing is what i'm saying is what they give is the base is 110 so let me see if it was just 1 over 10x what would be the graph of x now you can see this the graph of this would be the ease will be something like this so very very steep okay and like this will be a, a graph of and how do we know really this this because if it was 10 raised to x and 10 is quite bigger than 2 raised to x so 2 raised to x is a normal is like this so 10 raised to x would be like very steeper than this. So it will be something like this. And that's why when you reflect, it becomes something like this. So, and that's what I did here, this part. So this is that graph of this. Now what's happening here is uh, there is a minus outside. So what is that? What does that minus do here? See this minus 10. So the, so the first step is this one, I'll call this one maybe. And the second function is, it is minus 1 over 10 raised to x. That means whatever that graph that you see is, you have to reflect over this graph, this pink, which is has to reflect over the y equals like this. And then after that, then there is a plus 4. This plus 4 is plus 4. That's the next one is another 1, y3. So it is 1 over 10 raised to x. And add 4. That means the graph has to shift 4 units up. So right now, if this is that dot where so this dot goes one, two, three, and four, so it, so it has to move here. And in the beginning, the horizontal asymptote is this red one, right? So this also will go four up. So it go one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three, and I think I made a slight mistake. So that means let me take this off, which is not required. So the pink color graph shift four units. So, so if this this dot this dot will go one two three and four here. Sorry, this is the dot, not the top one. And then the horizontal asymptote would be uh, the the red one. The red one is this is the horizontal in the beginning. Now it moves one two three and four. So this is how it goes. That's the new horizontal asymptote, and then and the new graph would be switching this way see so i hope i made sense so the new domain in the domain will be the same but the range is what changes until see this is how it is goes until until four here but not four and it goes down so it means my negative infinity and then until plus four this is the range important part so the so what does this basically mean it is the graph of the y equals 1 over 10x but first you reflect it is a 
First, it is a reflector graph over the x-axis, and then it shifts four units to the uh, upwards. And the range is this. That's and the horizontal asymptote. So, what is the horizontal asymptote for this? Is so the horizontal asymptote is this y equals four. That's it. You're done. It means for x, when x become very large, <coughs> positive numbers, or even x become very uh, large, not, for not x is positive large, then this whole thing will collapse to almost equal to zero. Uh, question number nine needs uh, graphing calculator, so we'll have to graph this and then and check where it is increasing and decreasing to check if if there is there will be local uh relative maximum and also we need to find the range so let's graph using the uh, calculator so i'll click here and put a new one and and then start the graphing and let's put the function it is pi raised to the power x and then minus Sorry, so it's you have to do minus up there itself. So I'll go up. So it is x minus made a mistake. So it is x minus and there is x to the power two. And then just enter. So this is the, what they're asking us. Uh, and then they okay, there you go. And now I want to do uh, zoom in here. Of course, you can change this this to minus 10, you can change it to minus 5 and make it plus 5 and maybe I want to change this too, but I can do zoom in here uh, just to see the whether there's a peak, it's increasing and then decreasing, so I click menu and window and then zoom in and somewhere here, let me put zoom just off, you can do anywhere, but I will take here because that's more, I do one more time, you can see how beautiful the graph is. So there is an increasing and there is a peak here, there's a maximum there, and, and we want to know what is this, where, which interval it is increasing. By just looking at it, you can see from left it goes on increasing, and then until this point, then going on decreasing. So we have to find what is the peak maximum here. So click on the max, analyze graph and see maximum, Bring your cursor to the little to the left side of the peak, I mean to the maximum, to, and then to the right side, and enter, and you get the answer. There is the answer. Zero, so 1.5 until 0 0.5. See this part? This has to be understood. So, what does this point is? It means from negative, so this goes all the way to negative infinity, and as x goes increasing until 0 0.5, that means if we go here, this is, this is like, uh, 0 0.5 here, 0 0.5. So until here, it is increasing. See the graph going on increasing. So we say, okay, negative infinity until 0 0.5, it is increasing. And then after 0 0.5, that means from here, all the x value, that means 0 0.5. So this is increasing interval. And, and the and here the graph is decreasing, right? So for this x value, so we say all the way to plus infinity. And what is the maximum? So there is a relative maximum here. Relative maximum is this zero is 1.5. So 1.5 is uh, uh, it's also extrema here, but here it is we call it relative maximum. Maximum uh, we also call local max, maximum, but you could have got you could have two of them like this, then we have two local maximum or relative maximum. And this becomes the absolute maximum. The more of this you will learn in the calculus class. So here we have a relative maximum here, or it is also called local maximum, because either side, the right side and the left side, you see, the outputs are smaller than that. So I hope I'm making sense here. Uh, that means what I'm trying to say is, why do we say this is maximum? Because uh, to the left side and to the right side, both this output. So this is uh, the 1.5, but the, the the others to the left side, the height is smaller than that, and that's the meaning of that maximum. Where f at 0 0.5 is greater than or equal to the f of x, where x is is a you know if you take a 
open interval on very close to one zero point five. Any anything here, we can see those the output will be this output will be greater than the output. Now let's see how to graph this. So graph of function. Now first of all, what is so we need to know what is y is e raised to x. This is called exponential function with the base b is e which is called a natural number this is a special number natural number and it has the value irrational number 2.7182 and not that goes on so we just i just remember it's like 2.7 if i want to approximate here that means we know the graph of y equals to uh, you know 2 is less than 2.7 is less than 3. That means 2 raised to x is less than 2 raised to 7 raised to x, less than 3 raised to x. That means the graph is 2 raised to x is, if, if this is the graph of y equals 2 raised to x, and if this is the graph of you know, y equals 3 raised to x, then because this is in between, so the graph of exponential function with the base e would be it would be something like this more closer like this thing so this is e raised to x that's all it is okay how and what is the meaning of this and where did this come from those are that's a different video i can make if you want maybe but you did this in algebra 2 and we did it in pre-calculus and here we are now so the question is what does this mean so now I'm going to take off this, the y part. We don't want that. I don't want the 3. I just want to focus on the e raised to x, the pink color graph. So this is e raised to x. And the idea is the same. You can see the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, which is the x-axis. So this is the horizontal asymptote whether when x is approaching to a very large negative in this side. When x is approaching very large negative number, and the y values almost become equal to zero. That's why we see this. But question is, what does this means? That means <laughs> this means it is e raised to x. The graph is is shifted three units up. That means this point. What if this is the point which is the main one? I always say. I that means this is one, and this is two, and this is three. And this is 4. So that means this black dot will move 1, 2, and 3. So it will go up there. So this will, and then also the horizontal asymptote, which is which is the x-axis, so that this dotted line will shift, will go 1, 2, and 3. So it will go like this. So this will be the new one. And where is the graph of that? So the graph of this pink color will be now it will be something like this going up like this so all you're supposed to write is so the the graph of this is transpose graph of the natural function that is natural exponential function e raised to x which is shifted for three units up but then what is the uh, what is the horizontal asymptote is y is is three so that means here this is the three it goes there and the range part the range is it is 3 onwards so it is 3 and all the way to plus infinity so that's how understanding of this um, transpose of the function uh, natural exponential function okay so the question number next question is 11 let's see how to find our local maximum and here you need to use the graphing calculator so let me directly use this put this in the in the calculator 4 is to 4 times x raised to x so here it is let me take a new one and put 4 times 4 x to the power x and just and you can see that how the graph to the left of zero remember uh, our domain is in the if you see in the problem is greater than zero not the left side so I'm going to uh, use zoom in or maybe I want to see what is the minimum because the maximum we don't know it just goes on increasing. So here let me zoom in and see how it looks like. Uh, I want to make maybe I want to change this to only maybe 1, 2 and 3 or 4. So let me make this as 
4 okay and this side let's make minus 4 okay and then you can see beautiful this part that's what I'm more concerned here and it doesn't have a minimum I mean it has a local maximum minimum but it doesn't have a local uh, maximum because it just goes on and on and on up here so all you do is click on menu analyze minimum and go a little to the left of this valley and then to the right and there you go you got the answer so 0.368 so let me take a so so back to this one here so the question was asked what is the local maximum so it is uh, local maximum is at sorry minimum is 0 0.368 and 2.77 so and here you see because there was a graph was just going on increasing so you say it does not exist so you may be given different kind of equation lot of problems can be created like this uh, maybe x raised to x square or maybe x raised to root x so depending on whatever that is you can check and complete your problem okay this is a real world problem when a certain medical drug is administered to a patient the number of milligrams remaining in the bloodstream after three hours is modeled by this function so what is the question how many milligrams of drug remain in the patient after four years i mean four hours all you do is this so it is 40 times e raised to minus 0 0.2 and times 4 which is 40 times e raised to minus 0 0.8 and, and that's all you do so we can do this also using the five figure other with the help of a calculator so here it is we'll take a new one and calculate and put and put the t raised to so it was 40 times e raised to and where is e you can see click on this one sorry that's okay and then sorry I made a mistake here click on this and this and you see e is right here and there you go and you go raised to the power minus go up and you use this minus and put 0 0.2 because it's a 0 0.2 and then it is t and just answer and or you'll have to use you'll have to use control and enter and that's how you get the answer okay i forgot to put a put up five hours so and then you say control enter and that's how you get the answer and whatever is requirement two place three place decimal that we can do that's it so this is how we saw but you, you see later on we will want to know for how many hours does it take for so much of milligram remaining in the bloodstream and those are the problem we will see in 4.3 and 4.4 so this part this is You see this this means the graph if you see that in the beginning in the beginning it's like 40 milligram is being given and then each hour two three four five let's see the graph in the beginning goes the amount of drugs in the blood goes down decreases very fast and then slows down like this eventually it has to be zero like this that's the understanding one two three four we wanted to know what is this answer and we already got that answer as maybe there it is uh, 14 milligram or 14.8 so, so this is 14 so this is 20 and 14 will be this is 10 14 will be somewhere here somewhere here see maybe here this is 5 hope oh, that made sense right okay uh, 14 point whatever that is okay last problem i think one more so oh, this is question next question is you you have to use a graphing calculator and they have modeled 
of chi diverge jump from a reasonable height and there is a air resistance which experiences is proportional to her velocity and there is also downward velocity of the sky diver at, at a time is given so the velocity function is given at different times so the question is uh, find the initial velocity of the sky driver that means initial velocity is when he is about to jump that's t equals zero and you can directly also do that and you can say 160 1 minus e raised to uh, 0.18 times 0 and you can see when you do this this whole thing becomes 0 and e raised to 0 is is 1 so it is 1 minus 1 becomes 0 so that means in in the beginning it is 0 the velocity starts here and then find the initial velocity of the sky driver so that's the 0 here find the velocity after 5 seconds and 10 20 seconds you need to put this in the calculator and plug in so all you do is use the calculator and then and then uh, let's see let me put directly in the calculator uh, so you add a graph and type in 160 and then one minus one minus what was the function i forgot e raised to minus 0 0.18x enter and see the how and i have to change this uh 10 let me put it like 40 And then I want to see the top part also. Make, maybe I want to make two, three, two fifty. You see the graph clearly shows. You want to know the what is the value for different. You can click on this and trace. And sorry, trace. And you can just put x equals five, and you get the answer. Enter, you get the answer. That means after five hours, that's the answer. If you are after seven, you just enter and you get the answer, all the answers. And this is how the graph is. Almost there's a horizontal asymptote 160. So as the velocity in the beginning quickly start and fades away because of the air resistance, and you can see how it shows. Okay, so this completes that problem.